Happy 2024. I am your ASMR friend, just checking in on you. I hope you're doing well. And I thought I would kick off the new year with an on-screen ASMR ramble about last year's games. Because why not? It's not like this video will hurt my channel like the other videos that maybe hurt my channel. Ah, um, yeah, anyway, I do have a few notes, topics that I do want to talk about, uh, but I don't really have the ideas fleshed out of what I want to talk about, which is why they call it a ramble. So. I jotted these down because it's like, I didn't want to talk about this and then be like, holy crap, I didn't even talk about Phantom Liberty. Uh, so why not jump into Phantom Liberty? Phantom Liberty. Should I say it again for you? Phantom Liberty. So, Cyberpunk 2077 released. Phantom Liberty, new story, all these updates along with the 2.0 update, a new area to play around with on the map. And as a huge cyberpunk fan, is that on camera? <laughs> I was very excited. Uh, I made a short, I think, about it. Maybe I talked about it in my other ones. I don't think so. About how I was really more excited about the exploration, because that's what I like to do, is explore those worlds in my own way, whether it's walking through them, or walking through them, but you know, all these different ways to like experience and enjoy the beautiful city of Night City. Uh, what I didn't anticipate was how much I would love these new gameplay updates. Like, wow. This game almost kind of broke me in a sense because when I played it, I was having so much fun, and I guess technically I'm a content creator. So while I play it, there's times where I'm like, oh, oh, I could be recording this right now. I could be, I could do this and this for recording, that kind of thing. And for me, when I get those kind of ideas, so many of them, because you can go in so many directions, uh, I tend to get like overwhelmed and kind of hit a wall to where it's like I don't even know how to start kind of a thing. And it's not just uh, exclusive to video games, it's kind of in different parts of my life as well. But uh, yeah, I, I do have some ideas still for what I want to do. Uh, including one where I really want to talk about how how I didn't realize these are the things I wanted in this game. Because again, I really liked the exploration part. I didn't think I would want to actually play the game. Even though I got pretty far in Cyberpunk, I never actually beat it. I think I am on the last mission. There's the part of me that just doesn't want it to end. So it's like, well, if I don't actually beat the game and I know you can play it after but there's still something there where it's like I still haven't technically beaten it so I should play it right uh, same with Phantom Liberty I didn't finish the story of that um, but that I might you know it might just happen but the stuff that I did play I really enjoy because they went for that espionage thriller kind of vibe and after Star Wars, you know, James Bond is like one of my all-time favorites. So that in a cyberpunk world just really meshed well with me. I really enjoyed it. So I am excited to play more. I do intend to. But the cyberware updates that were possible now in the 2.0 update. Holy crap. The, the ultimate power fantasy you know you get all these buffs these strengths and it is such a joy to play you know when they were initially showing it 
and I made a GTA video, I was like, you know, but if I want to play like a GTA style game, I'm going to play GTA because I'm a GTA purist in a way. Well, I was wrong because I picked that up immediately and it was like, whoa, whoa, I can have my cake and eat it too. Yeah, I, I love evading the cops in GTA. So now in Cyberpunk, when I never had any, you know, desire to do that before. And obviously, they very much revamped their AI system for that. And now it's the most fun. I love jumping in there, taking out the cops, and then evading them, getting away. Or staying until I die. Although, I will say, in the newest, newest update, the 2.1 or whatever, they changed, what is it, the trauma team? So if you get like five stars, they send the trauma team on you. And maybe it was a glitch or whatever, but there used to be this element when you were playing against them. If you had the ability to shock them, where they would stay in place, oh yeah, you could use your cyberware to paralyze their movement. And if you were good enough about it, you could shock them, run around them, grab them, and then take them out. Now, if you try to grab them, they automatically kick out. So now it's like, well, now I don't care to beat these guys. Now I just run away, because that was a fun part of me where it's like, fun part of it and a fun part of me was killing these people <laughs> it sounds awful no it's a video game so it's good you didn't see thumbs i don't know where this camera is can you see my shirt welcome to the asmr ramble so yeah it's just a very still uh, just a, an incredible amount of joy to play that game and now they have the metro system it's really not that much but it's still awesome to me uh, you can have your uh, partners your girlfriends boyfriends or whoever's come over to your apartment while you hang out so now if you're lonely and single like me oh, oh this game's got you covered So, moving on, Cyberpunk 2077. Well, okay, we're talking about 2023 games, but what about the games nominated for Game of the Year? Alan Wake 2, Spider-Man 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Tears of the Kingdom, The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. I don't remember what the other ones were. The point is, I haven't played any of them. Sorry. Baldur's Gate 3 is definitely not my type of game. But it is my brother and father's type of game. And they absolutely loved it. And they also agreed that it should win Game of the Year. And by all accounts, from what it looked like, I think it should have as well. It seemed to, to hit on the points that people that like that game like a lot. So I think that's really cool to see. Uh, you know, it's just play styles. It's just not my play style, but I did enjoy watching a few people, you know, play through it or create their characters, uh, which kind of became a, a cool ASMR one to watch, actually. But yeah, so I didn't actually play any of the games nominated. I'm trying to think of what the other ones is. I could look it up, but I'm not gonna. Because this is an ASMR ramble. And I make the rules. Uh, okay, well then let's talk about some games. that I, The demos. I played a couple demos this year. It's like going back in time. Back when I used to have the Xbox magazine and they would send a disc full of demos. What a great time that was. But anyway. Let me, excuse me, let me check my notes. Okay, so I tried Dave the Diver demo. 
Dave the Diver demo. The demo for Dave the Diver. Uh, I tried Dredge. The demo for Dredge. Remember, we're talking about demos here. Uh, oh my god, yeah. I tried Lies of P. Kind of like with Boulder Gate 3. Hey, that rhymed. Look at me. I knew it was not going to be my game. Souls like, you know, very difficult in that way. But hey, a free demo. It's a great way to check it out. And I also have like Mortal Shell. Mortal Shell came free in the PlayStation Plus Essential. So I tried that too, knowing it was a Souls like, knowing I wouldn't like it. So I can't be surprised when I don't like it. But I'm not going to knock it and be like, whoa, Liza P was stupid. No. I wish I liked them. Because actually, the little bit that I got through, was like, this is actually kind of cool. But then, just immediately, that feeling of it, I was like, I know this isn't for me. But it is a demo. Remember, we're talking about demos. So, you know. Uh, it was fine. But again, like my experience shouldn't be it from what others have talked about it uh, and the little that I checked into it too. It, it seems like people enjoyed it a decent amount. So it's awesome. And again, you know, I don't know, maybe to you, if you don't know me, this is your first video you're watching. You don't even realize that I don't come on camera very often. Dave the Diver and Dredge, and they also have a DLC together. I think it's Dave the Diver that has Dredge. Someone will let us know. Someone will let us know. It's one of the two. Either Dredge has a DLC with Dave the Diver, or Dave the Diver has DLC with Dredge. Anyway, I actually did like both of these games, the small bit I played. I think I favor more towards a Dredge. And again, though, you know, these aren't necessarily my types of games. You know, my gaming has kind of changed, definitely since I was a wee little boy playing Super Mario and uh, Infiltrator for the Nintendo. You know, I don't even know what to call it. Your play style, your preferences change. You know, I think I favor towards shooter or first-person shooters. But, you know, a good game is a good game if it if it calls to you. So Dredge and Dave the Diver are on my wish list. And over Christmas, I almost got Dredge. I think I'm still going to hold off on it. But uh, I liked it enough where it's a cool, chill game. Especially good to play on the Nintendo Switch, which is why I like to play those type of games uh, but yeah I guess technically it's not a demo I think it was a beta and now it's out free I tried the finals uh, which is pretty fun but the thing with it is that if I'm gonna be playing competitive shooter I want to do it with my friends and this game is a three-person squad you know so it's like teams of three and look i'm part of a squad so I'm not gonna leave someone behind we have fortnite so that's what we're gonna do now, speaking of fortnite because why not it's in here fortnite played a lot of fortnite this year I mean, it makes sense. It's the game that me and our friends, me and our friends, me and my friends play. So, you know, play a lot of it because it's a way for all of us to hang out. And um, maybe I should have put more notes about what I wanted to talk about. I mean, just the regular stuff was, was really fun. But then they went back to the OG map, Fortnite OG. Now I I played like one weekend, maybe just the day of the original Fortnite map, so I don't actually have any memory of it really. 
I don't have the nostalgia for it. But it was really cool to go back and kind of, you know, see what it was like. I guess there were certain things that changed and, and all of that, but, uh, you know, it kind of felt like a little bit more simplified. A lot of more open spaces, not as intricate map design. Uh, but holy buckets. I mean, I think they posted where they had their biggest players in a day or something when OG came back and wow the sweats came back Fortnite used to be casual man and maybe it's you know my my global rank like my rank throughout all the seasons that now they pair us with better people I don't know but wow it got sweaty uh, in Fortnite but I guess that's just the nature of it, you know. More people play it, you get better people that play it too. So, that happened. But yeah, so, didn't have that nostalgia for it. But even I, when it ended, I was like, oh wow. I actually kind of miss it. And good news, it will be back. Uh, which is smart of them to do. Uh, so that'll be fun to, to go back and play it again, I think. Especially if they kind of keep it in that realm of going back to the basics with things. Uh, you know, it could be a fun change-up between seasons or whatever they plan to do with it. But Fortnite OG, really fun. All right, well, is that it for Fortnite? Is there anything else that happened this year with Fortnite? I'm trying to think. Of course. The Big Bang. Lego Fortnite. Rocket Racing. Festival. Now, okay. Lego Fortnite. Welcome to the ASMR Ramble, where your ASMR friend doesn't know how to start talking about these Fortnite updates. Okay. Rocket Racing. I'm not really a huge racing fan. I jumped in by myself, played a couple races, and was like, okay. Yeah, it's a racing game. It's kind of fun. Yeah, whatever. Festival. Uh, back in the day, I had Guitar Hero. I don't remember what number. Guitar Hero 3, maybe? Maybe more than one of them. You know, had those guitars. Played with my friends. I remember that fun part of it. Uh, a very different experience playing that type of game on your controller. You know, left on the D-pad, right on the D-pad, square on the controller circle and I jumped into Lego Fortnite and well no jumped into Lego Fortnite first because they released that first rocket then festival I think Lego Fortnite though when I jumped in I played by myself and I really did not like it it's a survival game and that type of survival you know for instance like i love dying light 2 but you know this when i just played i was like this isn't this isn't for me and i was kind of bummed because i was like it looked cool i like lego and then i played with my friends and she had already started her own village so she got a couple upgrades and things in the world so jumped in and then she kind of showed us the ropes a little more and, you know, we got to just play a little more and, you know, it's always more fun with friends. And then it hooked me. Man, did it hook me. And this is another one where I almost want to make a video about that experience. Although now, as we're talking, I still like it, but I'm not as addicted to it. I mean, there was like that solid two weeks where it was... I was living and breathing it, man. It was... Because for me, what I think what happened was it it was parts of these games that I wish that I could like that I never did. So like, for instance, DayZ, D-A-Y-Z, survival zombie game. Uh, 
I liked that concept. My friend really enjoyed it. I just could never get into it, the inventory of it, and, you know, you eat, like, raw meat, and you get poisoned, or you drink water without boiling it, you get poisoned. I get that that's what the game is. So I can't be like, oh. But it just wasn't for me. And I just couldn't get into it. I couldn't get excited about it because it just felt more, not even necessarily frustrating, just not as engaging for me. So didn't like it. And then, oh, I tried. I, I really wanted to like Stardew Valley, especially when it kind of blew up and everyone seemed to be playing it. And there's another one where I'm like, I love this idea. You build your own farm up, you get to know people in the town, and and then you can even have relationships and marriage. Like, it really touched on a lot of these things where, like, I like all of that. But the actual playing of it, actual gameplay for me, just, again, couldn't, couldn't get into it. Farming games just do not appeal to me. And I know I'm an ASMR artist, playing video games they should but yeah they just don't and lego fortnite has some of these elements but they're like simplified and it's just fun i, I don't know how to describe it like i don't like crafting things so much but in lego fortnite i get it like get all your supplies and you build up your village and then you go to a new part of the map so it has that exploration and that village build up plus you can play with friends you can kind of play a co-op but you can also live within the world with each other and i guess that depends on what your friend's play style is like for me i can trust them they're not going to take anything but also when i was building up my village it was like hey Take what you need. If you need something, if you want this iron sword, take it, man. It's whatever it is. It's just a video game. Uh, I know I put hours into it, but it's like, for my friends that don't have as much time and like to touch grass, you know, when they do play, it's like, hey, I got you covered. I got some things here for you if you want. Uh, so yeah, I think it just, the fun factor of Lego Fortnite uh, it's really cool. Okay, more about Fortnite, though, before we move on. Rocket racing and festival. Well, it's just like with Fortnite and the Lego Fortnite in general, where it's more fun with friends. So, we were playing after they had all kind of come out, and a night where we jumped in, we started with a couple races, and then, you know, when you're racing against your friends... There's that competitiveness, but it's friendly, so it's fun. And then festival, we played some festival, and you know, you're know you building up to get the band stars or whatever, so you're working on your own. <laughs> you're working on your own, whatever, level up, and then you hopefully as a team and as a band, you, you bring enough points for your overall score. I'm explaining it really well. I think you got it. But yeah, it's actually fun because it's just a cool way to kind of chill out, play some music, get some music. Uh, you know, I think obviously more selection is better to have more options. The songs seem kind of limited for now, but it's it's still early. Same with Lego Fortnite. I feel like the more updates, I'll, I'll be interested to see where it is a year from now because I think... Knowing Fortnite, knowing Epic, what they add to these games, you know, they keep Fortnite, the regular version, fresh. So it would be cool to see what they do with all this. But yeah, it's actually kind of kind of cool, because now there's another time we just played. We jumped into Festival, and I think it kind of helps with your dexterity, because, you know, you have to obviously get your timing right. And so when you switch to playing 
uh, Battle Royale, you're a little more honed in. So it's actually kind of a nice warm up. A cool part about the jam sessions, you get these jam tracks. And there's four, you know, there's lead, bass, drums, vocals. And you can mix and match with your friends. So they could be playing a lead from a different song. You're playing vocals from this song. Friends playing drums from a totally different song. And it all kind of works. It's just a fun way to mess around. Which is what Fortnite should be. It's just meant to be fun, right? So they added more fun, and I'm... I approve. That's right. Your ASMR friend approves of these Fortnite updates. You heard it here first. Okay. <laughs> Those were kind of the big ones, actually. I also realized that I'm talking really fast, but I guess that's what this video is. Uh, I did write two more games, <laughs> three more games down here. Do you want to hear about them? I forgot too, this was in the this should have been part of the demo. Ghost Runner 2 demo. The Ghost Runner 2 game also came out. I even made a video about the demo as I played it. It's on my wish list. Perhaps I will get it at some point. But actually, from just the small bit that I played, it felt like the first game just improved. And oh my god, I played the first game on the Switch. I mean, eventually on the PlayStation, but who? So, you know, that game with the graphics playing on PS5. Ooh, it's really nice. So yeah, I might get that at some point. The other game, Teardown. Teardown is a voxel uh, destruction game. So you go through levels and you gotta extract something. But part the big draw of it is, you know, destroying the buildings and how to do it. Welcome to the ASMR Ramble, where your ASMR friend terribly explains games. But yeah, uh, I played it for a couple hours, uh, a decent amount. You know, I enjoyed it. It just, you know, it kind of filled that fun meter. That's the term, right? It filled my fun meter, and I was good. Like, I didn't didn't need to go back. It's not that it's bad. It's just, hey, I got what I wanted from it, and that was fun for a couple whiles. A couple whiles. Welcome to your ASMR friends ramble. So, but there was a map uh, where what I liked about it was there's a part where you're timed. And you have to get three things and then go. And if you don't plan it out, you're not going to get it. You're going to get caught within that time limit. So it was kind of fun, like, oh, okay, no, plan it out. Go to this location, break down the wall. Go to the second location. Okay, you want to break the floor. Okay, go to that third location, break the wall over here, and you break part of the floor here so you can jump down and then get out. So there's a little more thought to it. There's planning to it. So again, I enjoyed it. And it's not that I didn't have fun. I had fun. I just didn't really see a point to kind of keep playing. But it's such a small file that I still have it on my PlayStation. So, you know, it might just be there if I ever feel like, you know what, I want to just blow some stuff up. Or knock some walls down. Because uh, it's fun for that. And then sadly, my last game I wrote on here. Man, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. I've only played three hours of this game. And I enjoy it a lot. I really like it, actually. Especially as someone who kind of prefers more of the exploration. I was actually really delighted that it it focuses kind of more on that and the combat is a little more a little more nuanced maybe it's not as like aggressive as like you know obviously it's made by ubisoft 
So it's like, oh, it's just Far Cry on Avatar. I was saying that too. It's, oh, it's just Far Cry on Avatar. But really, it's not. And that was a really nice surprise. But again, only played three hours of it. And then Lego Fortnite took over my life. So, I do want to go back to it, absolutely. I'll probably just restart it, but yeah, Avatar. And I also, I bought it at full price, thinking, I'll play it, I'll play it enough. You know, and of course, like a week later, it goes on sale. Isn't that the, the life of buying video games? So yeah, welcome to your ASMR ramble. <laughs> that, that's really it. I just kind of wanted to talk. I don't know how relaxing this would be because I felt like I talked really fast. But them's the breaks, you know? I have a Lego Fortnite video uploaded, ready to go. No Man's Sky. I returned back to Deep Rock Galactic. Really excited about that. And I do have ideas for Cyberpunk, always. Uh, I do want to do more walking videos but also more talking videos, maybe more chalking videos, clocking videos, rocking videos. No, just the talking and the walking, sometimes separate, maybe together. Who knows? Welcome to your ASMR ramble. <laughs> you're breathtaking.